My name is Michael Gannon. I'm a retired professor of history at the University of Florida, which is located in Gainesville. And I have been studying the Spanish missions uh, ever since, uh, oh, the early 1960s. I think I can put a precise date on it, 1962, when I finished my dissertation at the university and uh, turned my interest toward the first appearances of Christianity in the United States. And those first appearances took place here in Florida in the person of the secular and regular, that is, parish priests and uh, religious or order priests who came here uh, from the nation of Spain. And uh, I followed the formation of parish life uh, in St. Augustine, later in Pensacola when that city was established. And I followed the development of the, the mission starting with the very first one, named Nombre de Dios, Name of God, at, on the north side of St. Augustine. Uh, and that uh, property has been maintained uh, ever since and is marked today by a 208 foot tall stainless steel cross since that was the place where the cross of Christianity was first permanently planted in what is now the United States and indeed Canada as well. And from there, I moved into uh, the later period of Roman Catholic life in Florida and studied in particular the uh, administration of Bishop Augustin Vero, a French-born priest who taught uh, physics and chemistry and astronomy and mathematics at St. Mary's College in Baltimore and after retiring from that thought his days of service were over but Rome told him no we're going to make a bishop out of you and send you to Florida <laughs> and so he was uh, the first resident bishop in uh, the what is now the state of Florida and uh, presided over the Roman Catholic Church here and also in Georgia during the American Civil War he was a very dynamic uh, person and at the first Vatican Council in Rome in 1870, he made uh, certain propositions before the 700 uh, bishops at that time and, and he was scoffed at, uh, laughed at. Uh, he wanted to have the reputation of Galileo rehabilitated. He wanted to see the African American people recognized as being fully developed human beings with souls. He wanted to see an ecumenical movement established to bring Protestants and Catholics together. Uh, and uh, he was rebuked on every count, but less than a century later at the Second Vatican Council, all of those positions and more that he espoused were adopted. So uh, I took an interest in him and wrote a book about him uh, entitled Rebel Bishop. He got that title because he supported the Confederate cause during the American uh, Civil War. So that's how I got into um, uh, the mission story and into the Roman Catholic story in general where Florida is concerned. In 1966 I produced a conference much like this one except that uh, no archaeology was represented. Uh, we were behind the times or ahead of the times, who knows? In other words, we weren't smart enough to know that uh, archaeology had a role to play in the study of the missions. But in all other respects, it was a series of uh, lectures, much as we're hearing today. And it was entitled um, Spanish Explorations and Settlements in the American Borderlands, colon, their religious motivations. And uh, there were three notable uh, uh, lectures that I could name from those who spoke. Uh, uh, Maynard Geiger, uh, the great Franciscan historian of the Florida and California missions, who was uh, stationed at the time at S Mission Santa Barbara in California. Louis Hankey, the great uh, Las Casas uh, scholar uh, from Columbia University and the Jesuit uh, borderlands expert, uh, Father John Francis Bannon. Uh, 
these were major figures at, at the time. And, uh, and they gave wonderful uh, talks here. And the conference was attended by the Archbishop of Madrid in Spain and the Spanish ambassador to the United States. The native people were not uh, encouraged to uh, seek holy orders and become a priest, either a mendicant uh, friar or a parish priest, sometimes called secular priest. No, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. There were homegrown uh, Spaniards here in St. Augustine who aspired to the priesthood and they were educated in a seminary here in the city and were ordained. Uh, so you have very early on uh, a certain uh, class of Spanish uh, men uh, who were called Creoles. Um, and then all the while you have another group of Spanish people coming directly to uh, Florida from Spain and they are be called Peninsulares. And there was a great strain between the two groups. The Peninsulares tended to have a superiority attitude and the Creoles were always fighting for their place in the sun. You, you have contests like that even among the clergy. You certainly did at that time. But uh, Indian uh, aspirants to the priesthood, they may have aspired, but they were never ordained. In uh, the year 1606, a priest from St. Augustine, a Franciscan friar named Martin Prieto, was ordered by his Franciscan superior to move inland. There had been up to that date no mission established in the interior of Florida. So off he went, accompanied by another friar whose name is not known, caught a canoe trip across the St. John's River and then walked through swamps and woods and finally ended up in the hilly country around present day Gainesville and Alachua County. That uh, area was called Potano, P-O-T-A-N-O. That was the name of the tribe of Tamuqua natives who lived there. And he established a mission among them, which he called San Francisco de Potano, St. Francis of Potano. That was the first use of San Francisco for a geographical site uh, anywhere in what is now the United States. And uh, over the years, that mission thrived. It lasted a full century and then was uh, split apart by attacking British forces out of Carolina, and the mission was no more. Over the course of time, a name arose in that area, which went San for Saint, Falasco, F-E-L-A-S-C-O. And we historians uh, believe that that is a corruption of San Francisco. And, uh, there are many people who uh, want to see the name uh, publicized for that reason alone, but others want to see it more publicized because it is, a, it is a wonderful nature preserve and very highly regarded by environmentalists. And that's the story of San Velasco. Appalachia is a comparatively narrow wedge of land that exists in the northwest corner of the state where the peninsula turns into a panhandle. And it's bordered on the east by the Osceola River and on the west by the Oklahoma River. So in territory it was not large, but it did have a high concentration of uh, native people, the Appalachians, who were known in the 16th and 17th century as being uh, one of the most warlike of all of the nations of uh, Florida. The Franciscan friars had great success among them. Despite their warlike nature, they were attracted to the peaceful faith of Christianity. And numerous missions uh, were established all through that narrow wedge of land. And uh, the missions thrived up until 1704 when a gang, as the only way you can describe them, of Carolina ruffians together with uh, 
uh, a large number of native allies descended on the missions and destroyed them, burned them to the ground, killing many of the Christian natives of the Appalachian nation and forcing uh, the rest to flee in exile. Some of them as far west as Mobile and others as far south as Gainesville in north central Florida. It was a great uh, uh, tragedy uh, what happened to those missions. But uh, the Appalachian people are remembered still for being uh, one of the most successful and fertile uh, mission grounds in the whole of North America. At the same time that that British force um, killed many of the Christian uh, Appalachians and drove others into exile, they took 2,000 of them back to Carolina as slaves. And uh, they disappear from the pages of history. Uh, here are those natives who had lived uh, at peace under the sound of mission bells for generations uh, were suddenly in shackles uh, and living uh, lives we can only Im imagine. Uh, and their fate is unknown.